Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran Kumar, founder and host of You're Not Invisible After 50. Despite the title, you don't have to be over 50 to listen to this podcast. No matter whether you're 25, 45 or 65, we can all learn lessons from each other to help us build a better, more fulfilled life. Come listen to the inspiring stories of all the phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. They are not invisible. I'm not invisible and neither are you. So no matter what society says, life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. Welcome to the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. I'm Kiran and host of this podcast. We're all about showcasing phenomenal women over 50 who are kicking ass and making an impact. You'll get to hear all the inspiring stories why you don't have to be invisible after 50. So sit back and enjoy the wonderful life story from this week's guest. My guest today is Genevieve Petiro. Welcome Genevieve. Thank you Kiran, thank you for this invitation. Well, I'm so glad you've taken it up and thank you for choosing to be on the You're Not Invisible After 50 podcast. It means so much to me and I'm so looking forward for you to tell your story. So let's just begin. Let's just dive straight into it. Um, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself to our listeners in one line or more um, about who you are. That's fine. That's fine because I think I am... A lot of your listeners, your viewers, the people that are in your life, because I was climbing the corporate ladder because I was told to get a job. And 35, 40 years ago, that's what everybody was saying. And I was doing that. 30, 38, I had been in the corporate world 12 years and I had a moment, quiet moment. I was single because I was a workaholic. I chose that life and I heard a voice in me, which I now call my heart voice, ask, if this is the next 30 years of your life, is this enough? That's really interesting, because I think you do have one of those moments in your life where you go, hang on, what am I doing? Where am I going, etc. But we'll talk more about that as we move forward. So in this podcast, we're going to cover your life story, the past, the present, if there was a trigger point at 50, um, and also what the future looks like. So let's start with the past, wherever you want to start, it's over to you. Okay, thank you. Well, I'd say in that moment of that self-reflective question, which I'd never heard before, and I wondered how long it had been trying to, you know, be heard, I realized that, that I was working so hard and so fast for this idea of success and status and meaning. And the only meaning it really had was to other people who were also consumed with success and climbing that corporate ladder in a city. You know, I was in New York City. And what started ringing true was my Italian upbringing, my tradition, my dad off the boat from Italy, my mom from the Italian roots to have a family, have kids. You know, that's what life's about. And it was never, oh, that's not for me. I want to make it big. And I realized I would be alone in those 30 years if I didn't really think about what I wanted in my in my heart. So I wanted to bring children into my life in some way that it was possible for me. So I started reading in emergency shelters at night. I'd see news reports about those those children. And it was the most grounded I'd ever felt. I sat on the floor with them. I could tell by the situation they were in, how they how they were dressed in tight clothes, and some of them were crying, that the trauma was was overwhelming. And, and I felt that. And I watched one night after I read for several weeks where they were going to sleep in the emergency shelter. And while they were cared for and the staff were wonderful, they were huddled together in the same clothes they'd been brought in that day. And they were crying. And I I felt their pain, their loneliness. And they didn't have pajamas on. And I I knew, you know, my bedtime was full of pajamas. My sister, my brothers, we had a wonderful mom at our bedside all the time. And I brought pajamas one time. And the kids took them except for one little girl. And she just was so afraid of me. She wouldn't stand close to me, but she was curious. And I kept trying gently to to have her feel them, that they would fit her. You know, these are for you. Don't you want your pajamas? And she just looked at me and said the, the sweetest, sweetest words. Miss, what are they? What are, and she couldn't even say the word pajamas. And it, it floored me. It just took me out of, you know, out of my body. I was just, I didn't even know what to say. And, you know, 
there's there was so much emotion but that was the beginning of my obsession with these children and so here i was you know 38 what do i do with this 24 hour obsession i had a mortgage i had bills and in Kieran, I had to figure it out. And it was the scariest, most exhilarating journey over these last 25 years that I could have, you know, ever seen. <laughs> it's amazing your story. And isn't it interesting that the things that we take for granted, if we've had a fairly decent life, you know, other people have, don't have any insight into that. And that is quite a, what you've just told me, Genevieve, is so heart touching you know it's, it makes me emotional because I you know I've said to people in the past that I cry at everything and it does it brings tears because you think a young child who has never seen pajamas can't even say the word I mean it really touches your heart like what's missing in the world but thank you but please carry on because there's more to this story than than just that well you know I, I hid this obsession for so long because I didn't know you know, how over the top I was being shopping, 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 you know, and getting through my job. And I, I was such a diligent employee, you know, I, excuse me, prided myself in being the best and having my bosses, you know, be able to hand me any assignment. I was in, in the television world. So there was no room for, you know, you know, saying I'm coming in at nine and leaving at five. No, you worked around the clock and I was happy to, but all of a sudden I wasn't. All of a sudden, I found myself making excuses, saying I was going out of town. I had to go somewhere and I had to leave at five when I was going to the malls. And I was you know, bringing in suitcases full of pajamas so that I could run out at 5.05 and bring them to the children who, you know, the staff had been calling me. And it was becoming, I was juggling, you know, and, and in my book, I say, leave juggling to the clowns. You think you're doing a good job and you're not. You're mm -hmm. just not. And people know something's wrong and you're jeopardizing everything which lead, will lead me to one of the lessons I will talk about in a minute. But it was it was very difficult for me to wrap my head around what what is this? What is my my life can't continue like this, this, this you know, lie of two two things I want to do. So it took a while for me to try to explain it to a friend to see if I can get some input. But she shot it right down. You know, she was the very first naysayer I had encountered and she made all those negative self-doubt thoughts in my head come true. You know, why, why are you doing this? Why are you, what are you going to do? How are you going to pay your mortgage? You've worked so hard to, to get to this VP position. Can't you just do that? Like on Saturday afternoon? Like, I don't understand. And I didn't have any answers. Mm. I didn't know what to do with this thing. I had never been so consumed. And, it, you know, it, it was, it was, it was difficult, but I had this, burning desire, this heart that was screaming, you know, this, this North star. And I had to trust day by day that that would win over those negative rascals in my brain. I think that's really powerful because I think, you know, when you have, and you realize you have a purpose and a passion in life, you have to go. I mean, it's really interesting. I've just said those words and I'll see the background of your book, right? Mm -hmm. Purpose, passion. When you have that in your life, that's what drives you forward. And you know in your gut it's the right thing. And we all have plenty of naysayers. And it's about listening to your own intuition and moving forward with it. So let's move further forward then. Sure. And you said the key word. I never thought of purpose for me. You know, that was not anything that I was taught or encouraged to do. It just wasn't a part of life training for me back then. And I didn't know what it was purpose. I thought if you asked me about purpose, I'd say, oh, yeah, you know, lucky people have that. Einstein, Deepak Chopra, Oprah, um, you know, Bezos, all these people that are doing these major things. They're the lucky few. The rest of us, you know, we're, we're grateful we found a, a good job that we like and we have family and friends and we go on vacation. But I have learned, Karen, we all have a purpose. So when I learned that that was the word that I had found through this little girl. I mean, she she found me. This whole mm -hmm. thing was sometimes you find your purpose and sometimes it finds you, you know, you discover it. That, like you said, that became my North Star. And I just blindly followed, had faith. I mean, ran up credit cards. My book is full of the ups and the downs. 
I uh, met a great man who who did. I finally confided in him. I, I wanted him to know this was not going to be a two income uh, relationship because I was this close to jumping if I didn't get fired first. And he said, go for it. And, um, you know, he struggled financially with me because it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't an easy path. Uh, but I just, I don't know, it wasn't rational. It wasn't rational. It was just something that was burning, burning. I think you're right, because um, Genevieve, it's about not being sometimes rational, as you know that it sits within you deep, and it's what drives you, and it's that driver, and you just know that that's the way you need to be going, regardless of what happens, you know. And I think when you feel that in yourself, and you said it's a North Star, it's your guiding star. You know, that's the direction you're supposed yes. to be headed. And I think that's so phenomenal and so rare because well, the majority of the world are just swaying around, right? And there's only a few people who actually then begin to realise. And I think it's interesting through the podcast, I realise that women of 50 begin to realise that, oh, that's the direction we should be headed. This is what should be, we should be doing. And you have that kind of... um you know, eureka moment where you go, uh uh, I know what I should be doing now, right? So I think it's wonderful. You know, I think, sorry. Oh, no, I just want to say, um, because you're touching on it in the way and the enthusiasm that you have for all of us, including you doing what we want to do. It's emotional. We are emotional. Men, women, I'm not just talking about women. We just, Mm -hmm. maybe we feel that we want to lead with it more often. And when it's emotional, the idea of someone saying, you can't do that anymore. Take your take your band out of the garage. Just no, you are forbidden to have a dream of music. You are forbidden to think you could possibly survive on bringing children pajamas. You, you are forbidden to rescue all of these animals. It stops mm-hmm. now. You scream, no, you know, mm-hmm. you, you. it's emotional. It's got this hold on you. Mm-hmm. And it's almost... I say terrifying in the most loving way because the idea of having, of not being able to do it cripples you, just makes you feel like you're withering away. And I know that that's a key for for a lot of us entrepreneurs and people who have a passion that they don't know yet how to make it, you know, make a living at it. Um, It's just, it, it has to be. So you wrote a book. How did that come about? Um, uh, over the years, you know, I never expected to be here talking to you. I never expected to create an organization. I didn't know what to do or to, to expect. And when it became a responsibility, which I gladly assumed, because then more people who heard about it when I started to talk about it, wanted to help. And it got big enough where corporations wanted to know how to be involved. And I knew only because someone said to us, my husband and I at the time, if you want a grant, please send us your 501c3. And I looked at him and I said, what is this thing? And I read this thing on the paper. So I knew that all the people who had sent everything, I was looking at boxes everywhere. They trusted me. Mm -hmm. And I knew that this was the next step that I had to take. Mm -hmm. So I collected stories because people would ask me for advice. Sometimes, you know, people will come out of the woodwork when you're telling people your crazy story and how you almost lost everything. And then they will say, you know, I really don't want to be a CPA. I really Mm want to teach. Mm -hmm. And they feel like, you know, they want a little support and I'm all about support. I mean, sit down, let me, how long do you have? Do it, do it, leave whatever job, which isn't always easy. And, you know, and I preface that by saying everybody has their situation and it can be done differently for everybody. But I wanted to, um, to write down the lessons, good, mm-hmm. the bad things. Because every time I spoke and people wanted to hear the story, I would tell them it's mm-hmm. not all rosy, but the end, there's a pot of gold at the end of that road, you know, not financially for some people. Yes. And that's, that's a wonderful goal too, but you will put your head down on your pillow. You will wake up and take your head off the pillow, feeling full, full of love, full of peace, and, and wanting to do more. And the next step for me was the more to keep inspiring the adults mm-hmm. to to do this, not to think like I did. Oh, I'm not lucky. I'm not the lucky one that has a purpose. I think it's wonderful. I think especially 
I mean, it's all wonderful, absolutely. But the bit where you just said about lying down on your pillow, because that's what you do when you go back. If you go to sleep, feeling that you've done the best that you can, or you're going the right direction, and you get up feeling content and satisfied and full of joy and happiness, that that's that direction. It's not an easy ride for any entrepreneur. You know it. I know it. But there's a reason for why we do what we do. I mean, your reason was to change the world for the for the children. My reason is to change the narrative worldwide for women over 50, right? And um, so we all have a reason and a passion. And I think that if you kind of put that into the forefront of your mind, that's what drives you forward further and people begin to start to take notice. So it's wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to say about the past, about the book or the organization? And then we can move into the present. Um, you, you know, I, I talk about this all the time. I talk about the power of finding purpose and embracing the human connection. And it's a, it's a subtitle in my book because after that one woman who really shot me down, which I bless her because everybody needs needs to, to reflect on, on the ups and the downs to see, mm -hmm. to connect the dots, right? You can't really connect them moving forward, but I see now looking back how they connected and if I didn't open up again and start talking ab about these children, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have the support. And pajama program wouldn't have grown to 40 plus chapters around the U.S., over 7 million pajamas and books given to children. And now teaching some of them who can grasp bedtime is important. That the ones that have more of a, a stable family, how important it is because we none of us are getting enough sleep. So it's all about the bedtime. And if all those tens of thousands of people didn't know about pajama program, I'd still be like Santa Claus. I tell people with a sack on my shoulder, walking to the shelters. So that human connection has is a godsend and we all have to trust it. And we all have to start talking, asking for help, which was the hardest thing for me to do. Hardest thing still is. But I say it, it's not the power of one, which we all thought. And that's a famous phrase, right? I thought too, the power of one. It's not the power of one that changes things. It's the power of one another that moves mountains and moves people. And I know that. I know that. I think that's so wonderful because it's not the power of one. It's the power of many, which changes. I, I say it myself. It's a change of the many that changes things. And it, change, it becomes a movement. It becomes bigger than what you ever could envision. And you can't do it alone. And so absolutely, you have to have you as a driver, because that's your vision, but you have to have people behind you to make it all work. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. And I think I read somewhere, which I love, I don't know who said it, a leader walks behind its team. And I like that a lot. You know, you mm -hmm. give you give your heart to your your group, whoever is with you on this mission, this purpose, mm -hmm. and then you support them. And you trust them to walk and you carry them all, you know, from the back with the, the support and the energy that they mm -hmm. need to to get to their goal. Absolutely. Just love that. Just love that. So what about the present? What are you doing at the moment? Well, now I am speaking and getting on planes again, which is wonderful, and speaking live to audiences about finding purpose and the power of the human connection, whether it's your individual life that you're reflecting on, and many of us have over COVID, or you are a leader. You know, we need inspiring leaders, and that's what is the key now. What's the leader's purpose? How does the leader bring everybody, you know, on the team together and find out what everyone's purpose is and and is it a good fit or how can it fit better? How can you how can you embrace what everybody wants to leave work, you know, feeling? And what what does everybody want to bring to work? What is their purpose? And can you can you help them feel that they are seen and heard and that they they can go back and say, okay, that was um definitely me showing up at work. That was definitely from my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really important. I think that's really wonderful because I think, you know, giving something of yourself in terms of your own lessons is a powerful gift to others and seeing them progress is, is a much better gift. So I think it's lovely when you have that, you have the book, you have the speaking and you can 
ignite some fire in some person. It's just going to, it's just really passionate. It's really wonderful. So mm-hmm. let's just kind of slip into, what's the trigger point at 50? Because we're talking about, you know, you're not invisible after 50. So what's the trigger point at 50 that kind of made you think differently? Or were you just, you know, you, you said that things change at 38, but was there anything around a 50 mark? I think it took me a good, a good decade, a little more, or so that's about 50, to realize it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. I didn't ask for help for the first over a year. I asked for help when I was desperate. <clears throat> I started to open up a little bit for the next couple of years and as the John program was growing. And then we really hit our stride when we when we hit the 10 year anniversary mark. And then I was I was asking everybody for help. And I was asking everybody, you know, not just for, for money to survive, but how do I do this? How do I do that? Would you like to join us? And I kept I kept saying to myself, it's not impossible. Nothing's impossible. I never would have thought this. And I thought this up and I followed this incredible urge. And what happens if I keep following it? You know, and I became braver. So so I think looking back the last 10 years or so, it's been giving me giving me freedom to just ask for help and not be embarrassed, not be ashamed, not feel dumb. You know, I know that there's self doubt in there, you know, confidence. We all struggle with that imposter syndrome. But when you open up, other people open up back and it becomes this magical energy that you're sharing and then you can't stop talking. <laughs> no, I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. And I thought also about if there's something there about vulnerability because when you open yourself to, you know, you're vulnerable and show people that not everything's hunky dory and it's not perfect but you're showing up you're doing you are being brave those are my you know those are things that I go with being brave being strong and then you become more empowered but also the fact that if you're vulnerable you're more authentic and you can connect with people we're talking about connection a while back in terms of you know having human connection I think you only connect with somebody when you can be your true self and that just comes with all of that you've just spoken about as well. So mm-hmm. yeah. wonderful. Um, so what one thing that's really missing from what you've been saying, Genevieve, is all the feet on the networks that you've been on and all the interviews that you've had, because I think one was with Oprah, is that right? Yes. Yeah. And so you know, people will be interested in that, but you haven't said that. So let's just talk <laughs> about that one. <laughs> um, it was it was a life changer, as you can imagine. I mean, I I always say Pajama program is, you know, is my heart and joy and my legacy. And if I'm going to rank up there besides, you know, having my mom still with me at 88, having a wonderful husband, it's being on Oprah and being in her light. She, Mm -hmm. she truly is what you feel from the screen. I sat next to her. She asked me questions. She looked right in my eyes. She cared. And if you watch the show, which I'm not going to spoil it, people can go to YouTube or my website and watch it, you will see what she and her producers dreamed up. And you can see her, you say authenticity, you, you can see her, you can see how um, how she understood. And you know, she knows purpose. So I felt like she would get my, you know, sometimes I, I used to think it's a little story, you know, it's a little, but she got it and, and mm-hmm. she saw its magnitude. And it really made me see things in a different light, you know, because it is deserving of people's attention. Mm -hmm. And I am so grateful for her giving that that little more confidence I needed. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing that story. Absolutely. Um, Okay. So what's the future look? I'm glad I got that out of you. I'll just say that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, So what does the future look like for you? Well, I'm thrilled that I'm still speaking in in person. So I'm going to continue that. I'm starting a special campaign in the fall, which um, I will announce on um, my social media and press release and all of that on a tour. So um, it'll be it'll be on, you know, what I feel is our number one truth Mm -hmm. that we do all have a purpose. And um, I'm sad we didn't know it back then. I am. Hope, I hope we're all catching up to it now. I think we are. And I think it's very important for high school and college kids to start when they're thinking about what they're good at, 
to ask themselves, what do I feel good about too? Or, or what do I want to do? You know, what's going to make a difference to myself, to maybe the world, yes. you know, um, um, and to, to their family. And that's bigger than just yes. like a nine to five Community job, right? And the greater good. Yes. Absolutely. So let's move on to um, the bonuses. So the tips section of the podcast. So yeah. here we go. Five tips for anyone who's under 50. Hmm. Um, you we are not dumb we are not um let's see we we need to be vulnerable we need to talk to people we need to ask questions we need to share our stories because there's nothing we need to be embarrassed about there's nothing shameful in saying i don't know what this 501c3 is i don't know anything about dance but i love watching it it makes my my spirit soar where can i start learning about dance. I don't know how to sing. I don't know math, but I want to do this or that. Reaching out to people, standing there, looking them in the eye and saying, can you help me? And obviously you have to give back the same way, same way. And is that tip one, two, or was it all of them? <laughs> um, I think, well, it's a big one. It's about yeah. speaking, speaking your truth and asking for things. Um, Knowing it's never too late, don't think it's too late. If you're 49, if you're 50, if you're 55, if you've retired at 65, I have clients who are beyond 65. And that was the time that they put for, you know, what they really wanted to do. And you know, I hope that my work will help people discover that they can do what they want to do before they retire. But, you know, growing up years ago, you didn't, you waited until you were retired or the kids are out of school or you're house is paid off so it's never too late never too late to change paths if you feel like you're on the wrong path stop and i teach two i teach two things i teach the jump which i did or the slide but you've got to take whatever is on the back burner and slide it in even if you think you don't know a way how to i can help i'm always offering to to brainstorm with anyone so you it's never too late so the first one speak up ask questions. The second one I would say is it's never too late. Um, there's so many lessons I give. I, I don't juggle, don't juggle like, like a crazy clown. You will not, it will not work. Find a better way to, uh, to compartmentalize your, your life and make it and make a commitment to it because you think you're doing a good job and you think nobody notices. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you don't want to you don't want to drop all the balls and hurt people yeah so taking into consideration other people you know don't think juggling is going to be easy leave it to the clowns absolutely and number four you got number four or five um let's see I have a lot of them I guess um you know it's the funniest thing don't expect everybody that you love and who's been in your inner circle to rally for you right away because they know you in one way. They love you. They are comfortable with your relationship. And when you change or you talk about making a major life change, they're uncomfortable. It's not because it's not because you're changing. It's because now they have to change mm -hmm. and they have to get used to this new you. And yes, there might be something in them that says, oh, I would have loved to do that, but I didn't take that risk. You know, she's being reckless. She has a family or he has a family. So you, you have to be prepared for all kinds of reactions. And I didn't know that. So mm. I spent a lot of time hurting and feeling bad until, until I started asking other entrepreneurs things. And then I found out this is like, this is a big thing. Yeah. Don't expect it. Yeah. yeah. Because people don't always give it to you, do they? That, uh, it comes from left field, you know, and, and maybe that's lesson five, trust the universe. Trust yeah. God, whatever God you believe in, if you do, but the universe, your source, because if you are on your path and you need things and you are going straight, you will be surprised at what comes out of left field. You will be surprised at what lands in your lap. You'll be surprised that the more you listen to your heart, you'll get those inspired thoughts and you'll take that inspired action. And it's, it's like, you might even, you know, just wink, you know, into the thin air when things happen, like, okay. I'm not shocked anymore. Give me some more. <laughs> I, I totally with you on that one, Genevieve, because I actually, my whole business has been just about 
following my intuition. And I've been on other podcasts where I've actually said that I just listen to my gut because I love that inspired action, you know, inspired thoughts. They're coming from somewhere. They're coming from the universe. You know, my podcast was something that's dropped in my head and look at where we are now. And I believed it in, so, in it so much from day one that I trademarked it because it was a belief. It was so strong. It was like, I know I've got this. I have got this. And I think that inspired thoughts, inspired action is so powerful. So powerful. Well, here, I love to hear you say that. I was trying to think, you know, I said to my husband one day, <clears throat> what am I supposed to do with this pajama thing, bringing pajamas? And he said, meditate. You know, that's another podcast. He he's yeah. he taught me how to meditate. And I was sitting on the New York City subway going to this, the same job that I did have. I didn't jump yet. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay. And plop, exactly like you said, like a raindrop, plop, pajama mm -hmm. program. It was two words. And I said, that's it. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I get it, Karen. You oh, right on. <laughs> absolutely. I'm so glad. I'm showing that I'm over 50 by saying right on. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for those five tips. What about the three tips for anyone who's over 50? It's probably something very similar to what you've just said already, but see if there are any different ones there. Yeah, well, definitely. It's never too late, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say you don't know. We don't know how many resources we have. We have accumulated not just a Rolodex, a world of people and um, all kinds of people who have expertise in so many different things and just go after them, just mm -hmm. grab them and ask them so many things about, um, you know, if they're, if they change careers, I'm sure, you know, people who have, how they do it, how they feel. Can you help me? People, whoever you, you know, in your life, that's doing what you want to do. You're secretly passionate about, um, you know, taking care of the elderly. There's got to be people. So I think we underestimate at our age how many people are in our lives and perfectly willing and enthusiastic. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. Is there anything else you think that would be helpful for anybody who's over 50? Yeah, I think, you know, my mom's 88. So uh, there's a very special place in my heart and has been for the last decade that's different. You know, she hasn't needed to mother me the way that, or my sister or brothers the way she had to. So it's a different relationship now. And I, I cherish it. And mm -hmm. I think that, that that keeps my heart more open even mm -hmm. to new ideas, to new people. And I didn't have that, you know, when she was running around 100% energetic. And it, it's a it's a more um, cherished mm -hmm. feeling. And, and I and I embrace that and I want to spend more time. And I think all of us have those relationships if we've, you know, if we've gone past 50. Yeah, it's about cherishing the people. I mean, I used to have a br brilliant relationship with my mother, Roaring Ahead, which is, of course, the company that I formed at the beginning. It's because of my mom. And, you know, you honor the, those relationships and you need to honor all the people in your life, um, especially those who are of that age range. Yeah. Genevieve, it's been absolutely wonderful having you on the podcast. It's just been <laughs> delightful. It's just been delightful. I just loved it all. And having to kind of get in there and find out all the kind of nooks and crannies about what's been going on. It's just so wonderful. So all I can say is thank you very much for being on here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Karen. This was a lot of fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we shared so many personal things and we're on a very similar journey. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll make sure that we talk again. <laughs> yes, I love that. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for listening to the You Are Not Invisible After 50 podcast. If you want to hear more from some amazing women who are over 50, who are kicking ass and making an impact, then don't forget to follow us right here on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Remember to subscribe, rate, comment and share with other women through your social media. Let's spread the word across the world that you don't have to be invisible after 50. Check out our other services on www.you'renotinvisibleafter50.com and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. And always remember that life doesn't end at 50. In fact, it's just beginning. But wait, we have even more to offer. Join us and tune in to our other podcast, Shamelessly Untamed, a 
a transformative series that encourages you to embrace your true self and celebrate your uniqueness. Make sure to subscribe to Shamelessly Untamed podcast on other podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to rate, comment and share with anyone who can benefit from its content. Explore our additional services at www.roaringahead.com and be sure to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok and YouTube. We look forward to you connecting with us. Thank you.